Are you ready to unleash your full potential and become unstoppable in your success and leadership? Welcome to the Unleash and Unstoppable podcast, where we provide powerful insights and strategies for coaches, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I'm Alexanne Carter. And I'm Carol Register, and we're certified master neuro coaches who are passionate about helping you overcome your limiting beliefs and optimize your performance. Each week, we'll be sharing actionable tips and strategies using neuroscience, from interviews with industry experts to solo episodes to help you lead a life of power, purpose, and possibility on your own terms. Join our community of like-minded individuals. Hit subscribe now and let's be unleashed and unstoppable together. Hey there, I want to jump in and tell you that we have got this amazing three part series for you with Dr. Judith Rich. We invited her on in honor of our one year podcasting celebration. So you're going to see these episodes on May 25th on June 1st, and on June 8th. And we are so glad you're here. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome. Today is a very, very special episode. We get to celebrate our one year anniversary from when we launched Unleashed Unstoppable podcast last year. And today we have a very, very, very special guest with us. This is someone I hold very dear to my heart, Judith. She has been part of my leadership journey. She has stood for me. She's helped me realize so many places where I get to go in my breakthrough in leadership and just overall helped me really step into being a more bold, irresistible, bold leader and understanding the feminine of being a woman and the place and the role that femininity plays in leadership. And so, um, as we're jumping on today, I actually just came off of being recorded on her podcast where we we dove into this a little bit more and and looked at different angles of where the masculine shows up in our leadership and where we get to embody more femininity. And so Judith, it is such an honor for you to be here today. And I'm going to pass it over to Carol. Oh, nice. wow. You, Alex. I'm so glad you're here, Judith. It's so nice to be here with you. Um, you are such a a wonderful human being in the things that you put out into this world and somebody I really look up to. So I want to share with you Judith's bio. She is a pioneering teacher in the field of transformation and consciousness. She's an accomplished, and let me say accomplished is a mild word, (laughs) transformational and leadership development trainer with nearly 50 years experience, hello, in training (laughs) facilitation, personal and executive coaching and public speaking. And I tell you, she's done this throughout the US, throughout Europe, Russia, Asia, and South America. Now she's also the author of a best-selling book. Go grab it right now. It's Beyond the Box, Lean Out, Break Three, and Rise Up. Lean, did I say that right? Lean Out, Break Free, and Rise Up. Yes. Woohoo! Yes, yes. It was published in 2018, and it's got the tools to support you in reinventing yourself. Um, now, I love your podcast as well. Judith has the um, New Beyond podcast, which is so powerful, and it's available wherever podcasts are found. So, Judith, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. We're going to put your bio in the show notes so everybody can read the full thing. And my goodness, we have so much that we want to ask you. Um, Thank you so much, Carol. I'm excited to be here. Thank I'm you. really, I'm really glad you're here. Are, are you good if we dive in with one of our questions? Please. I can't wait. Let's go. (laughs) So in our programs, we have a letter that we have you write from your 85 year old self so that you can look at it, giving perspective and you are an octogenarian. Wow. Um, so I I would love for you to give us perspective now that you are in your 80s, right? An octogenarian, what what we can learn and glean from you in regard to if you could write this letter to yourself 
maybe some things that we should think about as well. I love this question. You know, um, I have been in relationship with my 90 year old for many years. Wow. I I recall maybe when I was about your ages or younger, even yeah. this having a sense about my own self at age 90. And at that time, that was way out there in the future. So yeah. she was a, a voice from the distant future. But I was in relationship with her and I would seek her counsel and seek her comfort and, and, you know, ask her questions and like, you know, she was way out there in the future. So her voice was kind of distant and not all that clear. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> she's right here on my shoulder. You know, my 90 year old, I'm 81. So we're talking nine years out wow. there. So. When you say 85, that's only four years mm -hmm. out in the future from where I am at this moment, just to give a little context. So yeah, if I could, so if I could write a letter from this place back to my younger self, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. write a letter to anyone, write a letter to the universe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be because when we're, when we're looking at the perspective of writing a letter from our 85 year old self, it's, it's taking us out of the short term, right? It's really bringing us into the life that we're building while we're in the present now. And so that's, that's kind of where I'm asking the, the question from, would you agree, Alex? Well, and it was, it was interesting because I was thinking, I'm like, it's something and it's activity it was something that I did a couple of weeks ago in my thesis workshop and I switched it. Cause oftentimes we're like in our present day, writing the letter to our 85 year old self. And on that mm -hmm. particular day, I swapped it. I said, what if we actually went forward to 85 and then wrote it to our present day self? And so then as a Carol and I were chatting, I'm like, I'm really curious from Judith's perspective because she's almost yeah. there. Like she's actually yeah. in the moment. And a lot of times we're in yeah. our moments and we're really looking, as you said, like from this distant perspective, where it's like, you're, you're, you're there. And just so curious from someone yeah. who is there. Yeah. What okay. Would you so, all right. Or, or share for our listeners. All right. Here's the dish. Light. Here's the dish <laughs> listeners. <laughs> it's all going to turn out mm. and it's going to turn out better than you ever thought it would. Wow. And it's going to, it, it, you are the central player in, in this movie called your life. You're the star actress. Um, and so you get to assume that place, not from a place of ego, but from a humble, heart-centered, compassionate, loving being. And so this is me talking to my younger self. Um, you didn't always know this about yourself. You didn't always feel this about yourself. There were many times in your life, many instances in your life when you felt like nobody was really there for you and like you didn't fit and you didn't belong. And, you know, it's like you didn't even belong in your family. Like, you know, like you were invisible. And I, I want you to know, little one, that all of that is going to feed who you become. So trust the process would be the main, I think, the main message is there are going to be a lot of changes. You, you're not going to succeed at everything. There are going to be failures. You're going to fall down. You're going to skin your knees. You're going to be stopped dead in your tracks. It's all going to turn out. It all has a purpose. It's all useful. Don't be afraid. You know, just trust yourself. I would also say to her, remember when you were a little girl and you lived up in the far northern part of Michigan, almost to the upper peninsula in an area of the state that didn't even have electricity yet. This was in the 1940s. There were dirt roads. You lived on a farm. There was no electricity. There was no running water. There was no indoor plumbing. You came up through 
challenging and difficult circumstances and and you're here you know you've made it and all of that has served you so i want to say to my little girl and to all the little girls and all the younger women out there your life is unfolding i would say in divine right order mm -hmm. your life is being guided by forces that are greater than you are now i'm you know some people might interpret that as god or religion or it doesn't matter i i don't put a label on it i just believe that there there are greater forces at work in our lives that we can't see but are always present for us with us guiding us supporting us we can call them angels we can call them god whatever we want to call them that we are surrounded always by love why because who we are is love it's who we are mm -hmm. it's not out there somewhere so that would be like from my 85 year old self i would say that trust that love is who you are and that's kind of a I don't know, kind of a Hallmark card sounding euphemism. <laughs> what does that really mean? You know, but the older I have become, the more I see that all there really is and all that really matters is love. It all comes down to that. And that it's who I am. It's who you are. It's who we all are. That we are the love we spend a lifetime looking out there for that we think somebody mm -hmm. else is going to bring to us. No, that's not going to happen. No one or nothing is going to love you in the way that only you can love you. Mm -hmm. So your biggest gift and responsibility that you can give to yourself and ultimately to the world and to your loved ones is to love who you are, is to fall in love with who you are, not as a personality, not as an ego, not based on your performance, not on what you achieve or what you acquire, none of that. It's a, all an inside game. Now that's a hard thing to get for a younger person because, you know, in our youth, we are, we're conditioned to be striving. I mean, uh, Alex and I just talked about this on my podcast <laughs> a few minutes ago, how women particularly are conditioned to strive and please and perform and achieve and be acceptable. And at the end of the day, after we've done all that, and you will do all that, and we all do all that, we do it as a way to learn. And we ultimately come to the understanding that that's not it. Wow. That's not it. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, we come in, we're born, we make that trip down the birth canal, which Alex's little <laughs> one is about to do. We make that trip down the birth canal actually alone. Now mom is helping, mom is pushing, mom is cooperating, all of that. But we, but we really do come in alone. We're like a stranger in a strange land in those first few months of life. What is this place? Where am I? <laughs> Who are these people? What's going on here? Why is it so loud and so bright? Right? <laughs> so we come in and we're not of this world when we come in. We're, of, we're from somewhere else. You know, we're from the transcendent, whatever that is. We come in from the field, I like to think, <laughs> from the quantum field, the field yeah. of all, the field of all potential. And we leave, when we leave, we leave this body. We're in that place alone in our last hours. We're in there alone. Hopefully you'll be surrounded by loving family members and friends as you're making your final journey out of this place but ultimately it is you who will make that journey out now in between hopefully it's a long time hopefully you all get to your 85th birthday and beyond mm -hmm. you know 
So what what's going to matter when you get here? What's going to matter to you when you're 85? You know, you want to live your life in such a way that when you get to be my age, you look back at the journey and you you like, wow, that was interesting, wasn't it? Wow, that was fun, wasn't it? Wow, that was scary, wasn't it? <laughs> well, that was hard. That was difficult. You know, it was everything. You know, it's like, I think the Buddhists call it the full catastrophe. It's the full catastrophe of life. Don't avoid anything. Don't avoid anything. It's all there for your teaching. You are wow. loved. You matter. That's it. That's the short answer. <laughs> mic drop, mic drop. Was that like gold nugget after gold nugget? I'm like trusting ourselves, trusting the process and it all being about love. I mean, I, I'm going to have to re-listen to this, Judith. I can just tell you. <laughs> oh, me too, because a lot of the times I don't remember what just came out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. The, the one thing that hits me, though, as we were saying, like, with society and the way women are, some you know, showing up oftentimes in leadership roles, what are some maybe some practical things, Judith? Because definitely on this higher level, and I mean, having worked with you, I mean, I will admit, right, at the beginning when we started working together, there was some resistance to that, right? Because of our automation, because of our beliefs and society and as working in potentially like, you know, quote unquote, broken corporate model, that kind of piece. Yeah. How can the listener who is like, okay, Judith, this all sounds great. And in hindsight, but here, this is where I am today. And this is how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And I have a hard time looking at myself in the mirror. I have a hard time feeling the love and, and feeling intimacy, right? I think that would, that was, that's a, a word that I know that you speak into a lot. And, yeah. and that is a word that from the first moment I heard that word in transformation, I remember it, it didn't sit well for me. Like it's taken me a while to say the word, even intimacy without, without there being any meaning to it. So where, where would you advise someone to start even on this, this journey to be able to love themselves and ultimately see that at the end of the day, it is love. And that, so I would remind you that you can do hard things, <laughs> that it doesn't matter if it's hard yeah, and it doesn't matter if you feel resistance, that's fine. Don't resist your resistance. Mm. A lot of people do yeah. resist yeah. their resistance Yeah, yeah. sets up a whole cycle and a whole pattern of yeah. being stuck and being shut down and being and being disconnected. But I would say move into those places. Like a little a, a little reminder in your brain that when you feel resistance, interpret that as an invitation to lean in rather than pull back. Mm. Um you know, I I I coach people put a little post-it note on your bathroom mirror that says remember r e dash m e m b e r mm. remember yeah so what does that mean it means remember who you are mm. and to remember yourself the members of yourself the parts of yourself that you've split off that you've rejected that you've pushed away you know, that you've made wrong, that you've judged, you look in the mirror and what do you see? You see the flaws, you see the wrinkles, you see the the dark spots, you see the, you know, all the things. I do this exercise, Alex, you'll remember mm -hmm. that, that we did it. Yeah. And you know, what do people see is they see their, you know, their, their flaws because we're just conditioned to look that way. Look and, you know, put that sign up on the mirror and then remember who's in there mm. to bring, to remember, to member again, to bring together again, the members of who you are to come into wholeness. So to practice doing it over and over. Remember, Alex, I had you do it for like a week, mm -hmm. every day for a week, go stand in front of the mirror 
in silence and just connect and be with yourself and just yeah. notice. Uh, so all the conversations are going to come up. All the judgments are going to come up. All the criticism. I still have it. It's all going to come up. Just notice it. You don't have to believe it. That would be another thing. Don't believe everything you think. <laughs> yeah. Don't believe yeah. everything you think. Because sometimes the mind is not the best neighborhood to be in. No. It can be a really tricky neighborhood. And so uh, listen to your heart. Your heart knows. So to drop down into, you know, when you notice yourself from a practical tip, and of course the key is, you know, it's one thing to have the intellectual understanding about, well, this would be a good idea to do. And then mm -hmm. it's another thing to actually have the awareness in the moment to do it. That's why I think a hack, to use that term, a neuro hack would be to put that little post-it note up that mm -hmm. says, remember. I tell people, yeah. put it on the visor of your car. Put it on your bathroom mirror. Put it on your computer screen. Mm -hmm. A little memory jog. Remember. Ooh, what does that mean again? Oh, remember who I am. Well, who am I, by mm -hmm. the way? So that's, you know, that's part of the work from my older self to the younger ones out there. Your job is to know who you are. Mm -hmm. Your job yeah. is to do the work. And it is work. And it is a lifetime of work. It is work I am still engaged in. And if you're really, really smart, you'll be on that journey for the rest of your life. If you're really, really smart, you will not come to a place where you think you're done or you think you know it all or you think, you know, you're baked and cooked. No, no. That's only an indication. If you ever get there, that really, let that be a signal to you. Not so much. You're really off track here. But to stay in the humility of not knowing, mm -hmm. uh, of knowing that you don't know. Knowing that you don't know. Yeah. Knowing that you don't know. Knowing that there's more that you don't know than that you do know. And to be in that place of beginner's mind, lifelong learning, long life learning, curiosity, stay curious. Yeah. I mean, I have recently come to the awareness that curiosity is one of our greatest superpowers. Mm, and as an yeah. 81 year old, yeah. staying curious at this stage of the game, yeah. for someone who's been on the planet 81 years, the tendency is to think you've been there, done that, seen it, heard it, know it. Not, there's nothing new, you know? Yeah. And so life becomes ho-hum. Oh, we tend to disconnect and numb out because we think we know it. No, you don't. You don't, there's so much more that you don't know. So, you know, one thing I say to people in trainings, uh, you know, I've been doing this work for almost 50 years. I don't know very much. Yeah. I don't know very much. Yeah. A and particularly yeah. when people come in to do transformational work and maybe they did a workshop or they did a training or they went to a retreat or they did a weekend or something and they'll come in and they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, I know this. I I've already done this. And I think, good luck, <laughs> because you barely scratched the surface. I have barely scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that keeps me curious. That keeps me passionate and creative and interested to know mm. what's in that threshold from 85 and beyond. What's beyond? What's the new beyond? Hence, my podcast, The New Beyond, is that place in consciousness that lies beyond everything we see or know right now. Mm -hmm. It has no reference to what wow. already is. Wow. Wow. That that gives me chills, Judith. I mean, and listener, you know, we speak on these things and here she is coming with her wisdom and reinforcing and empowering you. And I just want to lean in and encourage you, drink this in. Here's a new voice mm -hmm. who is sharing with you the wisdom of the ages. 
Hey, you've come to the end of episode part one with Dr. Judith Rich, and this is a one year anniversary celebration podcast. Jump into part two next week. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Unleashed Unstoppable podcast with your hosts, Alexander Carter and Cal Register. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review and subscribe. That's all for this episode, Wildly Ambitious Leaders. See you next week.